If a pair of shades and a pair of headphones had intercourse, you'd get the Bose frames. Though they're more like sunglasses that are pregnant with baby speakers rather than a proper blend of the two. The idea behind the Bose frames is to offer wireless audio without completely obscuring your ears while providing your eyes some sun protection. Because these days it's no longer enough for gadgets to just be one thing, I guess. They all have to be hybrids. The Bose frames are already available for sale for $200, but whether you should drop that money on them depends on how badly you need to hear your surroundings and your music at the same time. We've seen companies try to do open-ear headphones before, whether it's Aftershocks with bone conduction or Sony with its Xperia Ear Duo earbuds. The benefit is that you can hear your music without your ears being blocked and therefore stay aware of surrounding sounds. But no one's really nailed the audio quality nor the design for such devices yet, and Bose is no different. I do think the frames are a step in the right direction though. Bose has a compelling take on the technology that uses speakers and inverse audio instead of bone conduction. That's what makes the Bose frames unique. They're not merely sunglasses, they're Bluetooth headphones built into a pair of shades. There's a speaker on each arm that plays music right at your ear, as well as two along the underside of each arm that push out inverse audio to cancel out what you're playing. And, theoretically at least, prevent you from annoying everyone around you with your 300th Ariana Grande song in a row. There's also a pair of microphones on board so you can take calls or talk to Siri or the Google Assistant. Two models are available right now. The Alto, which is a more traditional Wayfair style, and the Rondo, featuring a pair of round lenses that make it feel owlish. I prefer the Alto. Its classic look is appealing, though they feel almost as cheap as the 3D printed prototype I saw last year. It's the matte finish combined with a lightweight that rubbed me the wrong way, but at least the company promises there are new styles coming soon. My other minor gripe with the frames is the slightly strange fit. I have a wide face, so Bose provided me with a larger of two available sizes, but it still felt snug around my cheekbones, probably due to the fact that the arms are engorged to house components. If I wore the frames for longer than an hour, then the tightness might start to bother me. Otherwise though, the shades are fairly comfortable. Now, since these are sunglasses, you're presumably going to wear them, you know, in the sun. But should you have them on when it's raining like I did or by a pool, you won't have to worry too much about getting them wet. The frames are IPX2 water resistant, meaning they'll survive a quick splash, but aren't meant for going underwater. Like most sunglasses, the frames filter out 99% of UVA and UVB rays, but they aren't polarized, so they won't protect against glare from reflective surfaces like snow or water. To control your music or digital assistant, there's a button on the underside of the right arm. Most people I showed the frames to assume there was a touch-sensitive panel on the arm. They're wrong. There's only one button. It offers basic controls. Press once to play or pause music or answer calls. Press twice to skip tracks and three times to go back, and hold down to trigger the voice assistant. The button's a little sharp and it's quite small, so trying to double or triple click was sometimes tricky. I also wish there were volume controls on the device. I hated having to whip out my phone anytime I wanted to turn the volume up or down. Changing the volume is something I did pretty often too, given how easily the frame speakers were overpowered by environmental noise. In a car or on New York streets, I usually set the device at 80% and can hear my top 40 hits pretty well. But I have to set it to max on the train, and if we go through a tunnel or I walk past some construction on the street, I basically can't hear my music at all. The good news is, in general, I didn't need to go as loud as 100%. The bad news is that when I did, people about an arm's length away would start being able to hear the embarrassing recordings of my singing lessons I was listening to. This sound leakage doesn't happen until you push the volume up past 80%, and it happens with many other regular headphones too. Overall, the frames delivered decent audio, but there was basically no bass, which made songs like Sam Smith's Dancing with a Stranger far less enjoyable than on my earbuds. 
I found devices like the Aftershocks X Trainers and Optishocks Revis, which both use bone conduction to amplify sound, much louder with stronger bass. But I didn't care for the irritating way they vibrated. I also can't wear the X Trainers properly since they need to wrap around the back of your skull for a good fit. They're designed for people who don't have long, thick hair like I do. The device is especially great for someone like me who hates earbuds, detests wires, and doesn't like the way over-ear headphones mess up my hair. But let's be real, that's a really niche and specific situation. I also like that you can have hands-free phone conversations via the frames, and all the people I spoke to with the eyewear said they heard me well. The frames offer mediocre battery life though. It's rated to endure about 3 hours of non-stop playback or 12 hours of standby. I can normally get through about 2 hours of music with breaks in between before needing a charge, but I was able to go days on standby without plugging the frames in. That's shorter than the 4 hour runtime Sony promises for the Xperia and the 6 hours for the Optishocks Revis, but we haven't had a chance to put those claims to the test yet. Most other regular headphones last hours longer than the frames though. But Bose wants frames to be more than just a hybrid headphone sunglass device. The company is working on making the shades more useful by letting you respond to audio cues with head movements. For example, if assistant asks whether you want to reply to an incoming message, you can just nod to confirm instead of having to reach up and tap a button. When this system rolls out in a few months, you'll be able to do more with the frames, like navigate through an audio menu by turning your head left or right and then selecting a choice by nodding. Bose also plans to launch its audio-based AR ecosystem to make the frames much more helpful. For instance, if you're walking through a new neighborhood, the system can alert you to popular restaurants and landmarks. It could also navigate you to your destination by telling you when to take your next turn. We checked out an early version of Bose's audio enriched world and gesture-based navigation at South by Southwest last year, and were impressed by the promise of sound-based AR. And it had no problems recognizing when I nodded or shook my head. Those two features could make the frames more useful than your standard open-ear headphones. And all it's waiting on is a firmware update. So those of you who've already bought them won't need to spend much more money. Which is good news, since at $200, these things aren't cheap. Though that's pretty typical for these types of headphones. The Optishocks Revis, for example, come in at about the same price, while the Sony Xperia Ear Duo costs $280. As a debut effort, the Bose frames are more than just a novelty. At least they actually work. But not well enough yet. Plus, you can't wear shades at night or at the gym unless you're super thick-skinned, which makes the frames useful only in limited scenarios. Bose says it intends to make prescription lens or clear options available, as well as implement the audio technology into other formats like bike or ski helmets. But for now, you're better off just waiting for a second-generation model.